Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. A modern parable, not found in the Word of God. A modern parable. There was a good shepherd. The good shepherd loved his sheep very much. Devoted to them in every way possible. The shepherd's sheep, the field that they found themselves in, was a very hard environment. The grass wasn't always very green. And those animals that attack the sheep were many, many to be found. The shepherd spent many, much of his time fending off the coyotes the wolves, the vultures. But he worked, and he fended them off. But the sheep seemed to care very little if there was a wolf in their midst or a vulture overhead. One day, as the shepherd came back after spending his whole day fighting off a pack of wolves, he walks into it, and he finds out his sheep were eating each other. This was quite amazing. As he's pulling the sheep apart, they were tearing each other down and eating each other and killing each other. And he looks and he says, I have spent my days protecting you from those who would do wicked and evil. And this is how you act. You've done wicked and evil to yourself. Well, I don't think it's a very deep parable. The reality is in the church, I really don't worry about the wolves outside the four walls. I wonder about how we do within the four walls. The wolves are easy to see for us. Stay away from that idea. Stay away from this morality. Stay away from that sin. Those are easy for us for the most part. But when we get in the four walls, how do we treat one another? Are we one? As Christ himself to his Father is one, are we one with Jesus? Are we one with each other or not? Jesus would have us be one with each other. So how are we doing? Let's ask the question. This summer, the LCMS will go into national convention for elections, for ideas, for the future for the next three years. Will it be a wonderful time? Will the national news have an article? These Lutherans walk in harmony. These Lutherans are in full concord. We've never seen anything like it. They are one with Christ. It was the most amazing three days. Or how about us? We could go a little bit smaller. Maybe that's too big. In about an hour and a half, an hour or so, let's just say an hour, we'll be in a voters meeting. How will that go for us? Will we be in one accord or not? If outsiders are in here and watching us, what would they say about us? But really, I don't care much about that. I wonder about what you say about yourselves and the people in the pews around you. How are we doing? Do we love one another? Are we one with one another or not? Well, the Bible is very clear. It's very easy. If you want a quick fix answer, I'll just tell you, well, it's just the eighth commandment. Thou shalt not give false testimony against thy neighbor. Excuse the old language. That's how I memorized it. And at the end of the meeting, Luther tells us, explain everything in the kindest of ways. Well, that seems simple enough. Do that, and we should be fine. I, I almost want to say amen right here. <laughs> almost. 
But this idea of it's really that simple to explain everything that your people around you do in the kindest of way, and especially our brothers and sisters in Christ. Look to Jesus as our example. When he talked to the woman in the well, when he talked to the woman caught in adultery, when he talked to Zacchaeus, when he calls Matthew, when he calls Paul, when he has called you, it's with the kindest of ways he is knitting together his church. We are his people. We are here because of him and him alone and in the kindest of ways. And you know this with Jesus. Are you afraid of Jesus? Or do you love Jesus? You love him. Does Jesus... Uh, Remember the worst of what you've ever done? Does Jesus throw it back in your face? Has Jesus said enough's enough? Or does Jesus forgive you and love you? Or another way to put this, does Jesus in his righteous anger reject you because of your sin, which he could do? Or does Jesus lovingly forgive us. You see the difference? We're the community of love. We're the community of forgiveness. We're the community of the kindest way possible. And yes, we are also sinful people that fall short of this on occasion. That's okay. Christ has forgiven you. He's picked you back up. And he said, go and sin no more. Live better. Live in the love of Christ. Live in oneness with God. The reason why the Eighth Commandment is a commandment is because we know deep down, as I've been talking to you, that all of us fall short, don't we? On our own, left to our own devices, we'd break apart. We'd go separate ways. We would be sheep that starts fighting at each other at best. But we are not alone. Maybe we need to see, start seeing the world like Jesus sees the world. Maybe that's an idea. Let's start doing that. Look at everyone as Christ through his eyes. We're one with him. Now, I love weddings. I don't know if you like weddings. I love weddings. And I'm saying this with certainty of telling you that a lot, not all, not most, I don't want to put any numbers out there, but a lot of pastors, not a big fan of weddings. I don't understand why. They seem so great. And when they're up there, the couple, especially the young couples, I got to admit, I have a soft spot for the young couple. And I'm sitting there and I'm standing there and they're there and I look out and I see all the friends and the family and the loved ones and we're all just thinking the same thing. These two have no idea what they're in for. <laughs> oh my goodness. They're so in love. She's wearing the best clothing she's ever going to wear. He's wearing the, the finest tux that he could rent. And there we're sitting there going, you're going to be united in marriage. You're going to have oneness, as it were. And God wants this to happen, but you know deep down that they just don't get it yet. And so as I'm preaching to them and to the church, I realize that uh, years ago I learned this. They're not listening to me in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> but I usually tell them something around this message. Remember this to the couple. That they're valuable. They're the most valuable thing on earth. And their value is because Christ himself has died for them and that he loves them and that they are his children and Jesus is one with each of them. And so when you treat each other in your life, in your marriage together, treat each other with the idea of this. Jesus died for that person. He loves that person and he brings those people together in love. So when you treat each other poorly, understand you're treating something of great worth to God poorly. We could say the same in the church. 
Remember, brothers and sisters in Christ, that Jesus has died for each and every one of us. He has loved us. He has called us. You are here because God himself has brought these sheep into this fold. And he said, we are one with each other now to love each other, to respect each other, and to know that no matter what, that person has died, that Christ has died for that person. You are the most valuable thing in this building right now without a doubt. And many pastors have lost their way when they forget that the sheep of God are the most valuable things that the great shepherd has. We are one with Christ. And the more we focus on God's love, the more we can see ourselves through Jesus' eyes, the more our family, our community, and our churches become one with God. That is what we are on in this road. As part of God's will in our lives, we walk in accord or concord with Christ himself. Know God, know his love, live in his love, be one with Jesus, be one with the body of Christ, the believers, the church. And to steal from John the Apostle, love one another. And if you cannot love one another, look to Christ on the cross dying for your sins and that person's sin. And once you take your gaze off of Christ, love one another. Have a problem? Refocus on Christ. And as soon as your eyes come off, love one another. We are one with Christ because Christ himself has made us one with him. May the certainty that you are part of God's family be in your hearts. And since the book of Revelation was read to you just a few moments ago, remember this. You better get used to us. We're coming along for retirement too. <laughs> may God's love be in your heart always. And may you love all in your life as the people of God. Amen.